All right, welcome back to the show. And today, I'm gonna to show you how I got this uh, one-piece shower installed. Um, there was a couple tricky parts to it, being that it was concrete, um, but it went in uh, pretty good. It'd have been nice to have a second person, but let's go ahead and jump into it. Wall left downstairs, and it's this one that goes across this end of the bathroom. This is a one-piece tub shower which has to be brought in and installed before the walls or you can't get it in. So I got to hook this plumbing up before I can do that. And what I like to use is actual Schedule 40 drain set. Um, it gets glued together. It's much stronger than the stuff that you screw together with some plastic seals in it and this is going to stay in that hole unless this shower goes bad and if the shower goes bad it's got to come out which I'll have access to that and I can cut it out and then redo it when I put the new tub shower in but this should last for a very very long time so my job now is to get this installed and then um, I just have this wall kind of temporarily tacked up here. So once I get in that in, I'll get this squared up and then I'll get that other wall built which will have the door in it. So let's get going. So the shower has a couple feet, you can see. And the way it's intended to work is for them to sit on two by fours. Um, I might have to shim or run these through the table saw to get them the exact right height, but I'm going to move this shower into place. I haven't glued this on, so I'll get this where I need it, get it glued on. Next up is to get the shower into position where it needs to be. All right, so I'm gonna mark those feet where they are so I can get my boards in there. Now, I'm going to hook up the drains to the tub so I can get make sure that my bottom PVC is gonna be lined up with it, and then I'm gonna glue that in. All right, so I like to put these overflows on first. And you can see there's a rubber gasket that comes with it and it's tapered. So one side of the gasket is thicker. And typically in most tubs, that thicker part's gonna go to the top and the thinner part to the bottom. But get this into place right away, get it snug, don't over tighten them. This is the piece that goes on the tub there's two screws that go through. There's little clips that comes, come with most of these that hold it on, but you don't usually need them. But just get that snugged on there. And get this as vertical and straight as you can. So you know where, you know that it's gonna go straight down and line up. The rest of it we're gonna dry fit, get it cut, and then we'll make sure it lines up with that pipe down below. All right, just make sure, so this T goes over to the bottom of the drain. So you gotta make sure that this is facing the right way because you're not gonna have very good success if it's like that. It'll still drain, but it's not gonna drain properly and it's gonna get clogged. So make sure you got it oriented right. This will go down. Like so, hook up. I kept cutting this piece 
and this piece until I got them the right length, just a little at a time, dry fitting them. So they're just dry fit in there. I got the drain temporarily screwed in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to mark every joint, a line on the fitting and a line on the pipe so I can make sure I get it lined up when I glue it exactly where it sits. So now I can take it all off and get it glued together. So you can see I line my marks back up and then I'll just do that to these two and then I'll glue that one in last. Now that we got that done, we're going to take this rubber o-ring or seal and we're going to put it on top of the piece that comes up through the tub. So that'll go underneath between the tub and the fitting. Then we're going to use plumber's putty on this piece right here. So I'll roll this out. rubber o-ring in there. So I gotta get that centered. And now these threads, it'll get threaded down in there. And just be careful that you don't cross thread it, so just work it until it feels like it's going in. It should go in real easy like that. And as you start tightening this down, you're going to see the putty is going to start pushing out, and that's what you want. Now, they do make a tool for this, and I have one, but if you saw my trailer, you would understand why I can't find it. So, a couple of these wrenches will have to do. So I'll stick this one down in there. All right, so you're gonna snug that up. And since I couldn't find the tool compromised, it's a 11 16 inch wrench, fits down in there. And then I just used a crescent wrench to tighten it. And while you're snugging this up, you wanna to try to hold the bottom if you can. In some cases you can't. Um, you just gotta be careful you don't over tighten it. And then once you get it done, you can just peel all this plumber's putty off that came out and you should be good to go. Well, there we have it. I had to grind the concrete right here because there was a little hump in the concrete and so I marked a line along here and then I took my grinder and grind, ground a little seam similar to this just not as deep so this edge of the tub will sit down in it so it's level out here and out here I mean it's maybe a sixteenth to an eighth um, inch gap on each end but then a nice bead of white silicone will trim that off perfect so 
I got it fastened in there, level, so now I can hook up the rest of my plumbing down there and then get this wall put into place and then build the other one finally. A lot of messing around, a lot of messing around. Another kind of uh, anchor I use are these tap cons. So you see those are four inches. I have an inch and a half for the plate, so I'm only going two and a half inches in the concrete. But like this is on concrete, so instead of having a continuous plate and then being able to drill holes for your plumbing, you have to break those bottom plates up. So when I make them, I take a two by four and I screw in to all those little piece, little sections to hold them in place. And then I go through and put one of these tap cons on each end of each section. So that's what I'm doing now. So I got my plumbing hooked up in here, and if you can see, I've got the, sh the tub shower drain comes down here, and then it goes down to the trap, which I have since filled in with gravel. But I have a rubber coupling that's uh, got really, it's got stainless steel clamps on it, and I like to do that because if I ever need to get this out, I can just take that rubber coupling off and get this out and not have to mess with any of my other plumbing. So that down there will never have to be disturbed. I'll only have to loosen this um, coupling here. Now, I like to put an access door, which I will have right here this is going to be the pantry so I'll have a cabinet here and in the back of the cabinet I will have an access door so one I will I like to um, check you know once a year to make sure nothing's leaking um, but then I'll always have access to that if I need to unhook it to get the shower out if anything would ever happen so got that in a um, little problem I had is my vent um, comes up right here which just so happens I didn't figure that right and it came up right at the edge of my shower so I had to cut it off down there put a 45 on it and then it'll come over and up so I could get this piece of wood in to attach the edge of the tub shower to. So you can see I just got pan head screws holding it in place all the way around now that it's in um, it's pretty solid but it's definitely a little more difficult than putting it on a wood subfloor, which I'm thankful the rest of them are going upstairs and will be on the wood subfloor, which will be nice and easy to do. So, all right, you can see how it's fit now that it's finished. Those little legs are sitting on those green treated two by fours that I screwed in and bolted to the floor. We're all framed in. I'll have to cut a hole here for my controls and my shower head will be up high. But the only, the hardest part about this shower was this front edge. This concrete just kind of had a little bit of a hump in it and I just had to grind that out. Um, it wasn't a big deal. Um, obviously it was hard to do by myself moving this thing in and out. That's just kind of the way it goes. What I like to do is for the back of it, I like to center, or I like to take two 2x4s 
and the center of the shower I just kind of offset them so there's like a foot and then I'll patch in a board to attach my controls to when it's time. Just use flat head pan screws here. My drywall will come up to right here and then this will get filled in. And I'll probably do some tile work down the sides and up above. All right guys, so that wraps up the tub shower install. Hopefully that was helpful to somebody. I just thought with the problems that I ran into that I would do a separate video in hopes that it would help somebody. Um, but later this week, I'm gonna have a couple more videos coming out. One um, will be the eye joists and subfloor installation. And another one will be on how to build your own stair stringers and stairs. So stay tuned and we'll catch you on the next video.